Okay, so welcome to our workshop. Today is a very important workshop. This is a workshop where I teach you how you can help yourself at home. Who here wants to be able to do things on their own? Can I say something? Out of love, claiming responsibility for your health is important because there's many people out there that don't want to do things at home. They rely on going to a doctor's office, getting the treatment, but doing nothing to modify a single thing out there. And for ideal results, you want to do both. Okay, so the key to our talk today is how can you be healthier? How can you heal better? And there's a very, very important key to how to accomplish this. It's how do you increase your immune system's function, okay? And how do we decrease inflammation? Pardon my handwriting, but I do have doctor's handwriting, okay? <laughs> so how can we increase your immune system is extremely important. Your immune system determines how well you heal. How do we decrease inflammation? Who here by show of hands is familiar with the term inflammation? <laughs> inflammation is the breeding ground for disease processes in the human body, absolutely. And when we're talking about inflammation, we're not just talking about inflammation in your knee. We're talking about systemic inflammation. That includes the knee, but also systemic and physiologically. You will not heal well if you have chronic inflammation, okay? So the first thing that I wanna start off by talking about is what can you do as far as what foods you put in. Now, how many people here, by a show of hands, feel that your diet is where you're, you want your diet to be? I, I actually hate to use the word diet. I should say your nutrition is where you want it to be. Raise your hand. Be honest, okay? And there's some overachievers in this room that does very well. I, you know, I remember speaking to you briefly about it, but there's patients that want to do even better than well. They want to strive for excellence and that's why I'm glad you're here today. I remember our conversation. So what, you have this on your sheet of paper on your clipboard, but let's start off by talking about breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. So I'm going to walk you through these things and I'm gonna to explain to you what my best recommendations are for optimizing how well you heal and how to decrease inflammation in your body all through the foods that you eat. Okay, so let's get started. By a show of hands, who eats eggs for breakfast? Oh, just about everybody, I'm gonna to explain to every people watching this video, just about everybody raised their hands. And what I'm going to do is when I go through this, when I go through this regimen with you, I'm going to now explain to you, I'm gonna throw you a curveball right now. There's four key foods that we're gonna leave out of your regimen, your nutritional regimen. And they are gluten, soy, dairy, and egg. Gluten, soy, dairy, and egg. Now I see jaws dropping and eyeballs popping out, wondering how do you even do that? What is the purpose? And I'm going to explain all that to you. So gluten, soy, dairy, and egg are the four key foods that in medical journals worldwide are linked to chronic inflammatory and <coughs> autoimmune disorders. <coughs> autoimmune means that your body is attacking your own healthy tissue. So what are common autoimmune disorders that you know of? Uh, there's rheumatoid, there's lupus, there's Hashimoto's with the thyroid, there's many, there's colitis, Crohn's, and celiac, there's many autoimmune conditions that you could suffer from. Now the only way to know for sure if you're allergic to these four things is to test. Okay, we have specific tests that we could talk about separate from today's workshop about how you could determine if you're allergic to these foods. But for the purpose of the workshop, I'm going to just exclude these foods because if you choose not to test, I also want to, I don't want to have it on my head that you went home and ate these things because I told you to. Well, no, we're going to leave these out, okay? So therefore, if you eat eggs for breakfast, we're already leaving it out. So then what do you do? Well, let's put it, well, oh, you felt that, that's another trap that you fell into. What we have learned, we grew up in a General Mills society where you remember the TV commercials and the, t and the, the newspaper ads showing you the pitcher of orange juice, the pitcher of milk, your bowl of cereal, your eggs, and that's what we call the American breakfast. 
But let's put it this way. We see a lot of patients, this is South Florida, we see a lot of patients from other cultures and other places. And guess what? They have no problem eating rotisserie chicken for breakfast. Leftover food from the night before, having some fish for breakfast. This is our mentality that we need to shed, that there's no reason to do that. Somebody in this room mentioned, go to cereal. But you know something? If you really think about it, there's no nutrition in cereal. Some people joke around and actually say you're probably better off eating the box than the cereal itself. <laughs> so we need to talk about what type of nutrition. So for breakfast, what I feel the ideal scenario is, because for every meal, whether it's breakfast, I'm gonna need another marker, please. Mm -hmm. Lunch or dinner, what does the P stand for? Protein. Okay. Thank you. Protein, very good. So now you may be saying to yourselves, if I'm recommending protein for breakfast, but you can't eat eggs? What do you do? <laughs> I'm gonna share with you what, what you do. Uh, what I think my best recommendations is also always a protein shake. I think I might as well spell out protein since we're videoing this. <laughs> okay, protein shake. So what constitutes the best protein shakes? How many people have heard of whey protein? W-H-E-Y, whey protein. Okay, no way. No way. No way. That's just my joke, no way. No way, use whey. Don't, don't use whey. A lot of people have an allergy to whey and they don't realize it. So I'm going to talk to you about some solutions and alternatives to the protein. First, there is beef protein, okay? And I use beef protein with patients all the time. Why? I feel, when you look at the studies of the human body, we are carnivores, okay? If there's any vegans in this room, you may wanna lynch me right now, okay? And, and look, fruits and vegetables are important. Can you just lower the air conditioning a tiny bit? Thank you. Uh, and fruits and vegetables are very important, but guess what? We need meat in our bodies. So we use a beef protein with patients in the office. Other sources of protein, if you don't wanna do a beef protein, there's pea protein, the vegetable pea protein. There's hemp protein. So there's other sources of protein that you can use. So how many people are using protein shakes right now? I'm using the hemp. Okay, good. Hemp. So, so you're hemp using seeds. that the hemp, hemp seeds. protein? Hemp seeds. Okay, so therefore, protein shake. Now what should you use as a base for your protein shake? And once again, please all questions at the end, okay? What you should use as a base is not dairy. We are leaving out dairy. We are leaving out eggs, okay? What you should be using as a base, almond milk, rice milk. And I know sometimes diabetics in the room uh, are asking the questions, isn't there a lot of sugar in those things? Yes, but I'm not saying that you're gonna be drinking this all day long. As a base for this, you could certainly use that. It's better, better flavor than water. You could use water, but in the protein shakes, I always add in my fruits and veggies, okay? So what are the best fruits for decreasing inflammation and, and, and vegetables, decreasing inflammation and increasing your immune system? I love berries, absolutely berries. Raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, whatever berries you wanna throw in there. So when I make this concoction for breakfast, I'll uh, use the beef protein, well, uh, I'll add a base of almond milk, I'll throw in my blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. My kids think that my grocery shop is very boring because I could pretty much just go to Publix and be blindfolded and just grab what is, I, I, you know, pretty, same diet every day, but these things are very, very, very good for you. And you may be asking, what do you use for vegetables for breakfast? Because once again, if it's not in an omelet, what do you use? I use a, a green powder, okay? And we could talk about that at another time, the specific green powder that I use that I add in so we get the, the protein, the vegetables, the fruits in one delicious shake. I put it in one of the mini blenders that you could buy. I'm not here to endorse any specific name, so I can't say it since we're filming, but any mini blender that you could get at, at Target or any you know, local retail store, zip and zoom it in about 30 seconds and you have a beautiful shake. You don't have to sit here and put it in a blender. How many people have experience with blenders where you sit there, you gotta wash this huge thing out, you slice your hand open trying to get to the blade, you don't need that anymore. They make these tiny little things that you could zip and zoom and, and just drink them. So that's for breakfast. Now for lunch and for dinner, what proteins should you be ingesting? Well, let's think about this. Fish, 
Okay, you should be having fish at least three, four days a week, at least. Fish, you know, it's one of the best things that you can put into your body. Uh, all meats for me are fair game when I work with patients, including red meat. Now, am I saying that I want you to eat red meat for every meal, every day of your life? Absolutely not, okay? But guess what? An occasional red meat, me personally, I could explain to you what I do personally. When it comes to advice one-on-one -on -one nutritionally, I would never give you advice in a workshop setting. After today, if you have any questions and want to do a consultation, we will sit down and we will review your regimen. And I could guide you one-on-one -on -one to make these wise decisions, not in front of a group full of people, because in reality, you may have a health condition that this person doesn't have, and we have to work with you differently than you. Right now, this is just a generalization, okay? Uh, but proteins, so red meat, for me personally, if I, I'll have once a week, I'll you know, have a nice filet. I'll do it right. I'm not eating McDonald's and putting garbage in my body. But chicken, uh, pork, fish, red meat's fair game for every meal. And with every meal, you also want a veggie. Okay, green, leafy, fluffy vegetables. And some people in this room may say, well, I'm on blood thinners. And obviously this is where we will discuss on a one-on-one -on -one basis what type of vegetables will be best for you. But in, in, as a generality, green, leafy, fluffy vegetables, kale. And I know some of you have seen me walking around the office like a rabbit eating kale. Yes, I really eat like this. So kale. Uh, spinach, these are the best foods that you could put in your body, best vegetables, I should say, anything dark and leafy. Notice that I don't have any fruits here. In reality, you want to have more fruits, I'm sorry, more vegetables in your diet than fruits. But take a guess what the average American does. The polar opposite and then some. Why? Fruits have a lot of sugar. They're tasty. Who in their right mind would not choose a fruit over a vegetable any day? So when we sit down and we want to eat healthy and we want to know psychologically we're doing good for our bodies, doing well for our bodies, and you know, I'll pick up that fruit. I know I'm doing well for my body, it's a fruit. But we forget that there's sugar in there and we're not tempted by the, the vegetable as much. But we need to make a conscious effort to, to make sure we get more vegetables. <coughs> so protein, veggie, protein, veggie. With your snacks, this is where you can have a piece of fruit. Now, who wants to take a guess what the healthiest fruit is for diabetic patients? And I, and I cite this from, from the glycemic index, apples. apples. So if you are eating bananas and you're a diabetic patient, don't take my word for it. Look at the glycemic index. Use your friend Google. Nowadays, you got to love the internet. You don't have to trust anything I'm saying. Go check what I'm saying, okay? But look at Google and see that your bananas, if you're a blood sugar sufferer, will send your blood sugar on a roller coaster that you don't want. The banana? Okay? That, that you don't want, yes. So therefore, stick to the apples, okay? So fruits, another nutritious snack, nuts. Okay, this is where you can have your nuts. Okay, obviously I need to put the disclaimer that if you're a digestive patient and you have, uh, you know, diverticulitis or you have Crohn's or celiac or, or irritable bowel, you may not want to do that one-on-one -on -one basis. This is a generalization, but I do need to state that. Um, so fruits, nuts, uh, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite snacks of all time that I discuss at every workshop we do is hummus, okay? Chickpeas, I love it. And it's funny, I like to share this story also that I used to really dislike chickpeas and hummus. And then one day I did a liver detox and it changed my whole metabolism and changed everything inside uh, just from doing this detox. And I remember when I was doing the detox, I was opening up the refrigerator door and my body's you know, getting rid of things. You lose cravings, but the funny thing is is that sometimes you gain cravings. I would open up my refrigerator door and I would see a bowl of chickpeas. And for me, it was like a glowing beam of light on there, calling out my name. And I kept saying to myself, when this you know, detoxification of my liver is over, I'm all about those chickpeas. And ever since then, I eat chickpeas. Okay, I used to really dislike them up until that point, so it's kind of funny. So protein with, with every meal, vegetables with every meal, fruits reserved for the snacks because then you'll automatically have lesser fruits than your vegetables without really even having to think about it. And this is a great way to decrease inflammation to increase your immune system. Now there's one main food group that we completely, that we all grew up with that pyramid, okay, that we all are accustomed to having, and that food group are your grains.
Notice there's no grains in here. Why? We are eliminating the, the gluten with the soy, with the dairy, with the egg. Now soy, by the way, while I remember to say this, you, if you are allergic to soy, you need to be careful because soy is found in everything. So when we see patients with major food sensitivities and allergies that we, that we test for, oh my goodness, you know, soy, if you are allergic to soy, it's found in almost everything you can imagine. So we really need to do our due diligence. Nowadays with the fancy smartphones that we have, they make smartphone apps where you could put in what your food sensitivities are and when you go to the grocery store, you just scan the label. And you don't even have to read the label anymore, it's that fancy. You just go there and oh, I can't eat that. So, because sometimes labels are hard to read. I remember going back to undergrad. I'd like to share this story. I went to undergrad upstate New York in Binghamton, okay? And I was a biology major. And one of the classes that I took was a nutrition class. And we spent half the semester, literally it seemed, talking about the correct way to read a food label. And it sounds silly until you're that person that needs to go read the food label, okay? So, with that being said, uh, this is a great regimen to decrease uh, inflammation, increase your immune system. Now, the grains we leave out, because the grains are things like gluten. So, I know that we have always had ingrained in our minds to eat grains. For the purpose of this workshop, I am leaving out gluten, but if you can do this regimen, there's actually a name to this regimen. The name to this regimen, does anybody want to call it out? Have you, there's a, a specific name. I did not make this up. I am merely communicating to you what this regimen is. Does anybody want to take a guess what this regimen is called? The Mediterranean? Very close. That's a, that's a very close, and in our workshops, people very often say that. This is called, you ready? Drum roll. This is called the paleo diet. Okay? Paleo diet. I know I hate to use the word diet, I mentioned that earlier. Regimen, however we want to say it. But paleo, bringing us back to paleolithic era, where we were hunters and gatherers. And there, wasn't, there weren't any processed foods. You would go out and you would slay an animal and you'd drag it back to the cave and you'd grow your fruits and vegetables. And therefore, that's what I practice personally and I discuss with patients the best way, I'm gonna say this to the end of time, to increase your immune system and to decrease inflammation. Now, they didn't last long. Now, what it comes down to is, no, if you want, used to do that. let's save questions for the end, please, okay? Uh, if you want to put grains back in, okay? Let's talk about modified grains, gluten-free grains. We have literature up front that you can speak to them at the front desk about what constitutes a gluten-free grain, but just, for, just to keep it nice and simple with you, uh, things like uh, brown rice, basmati rice, quinoa, oats, if they're guaranteed to be produced in a gluten-free facility, these are all grains that you can ingest that are considered gluten-free grains, okay? So uh, once again, let's just summarize this. We're here to increase the immune system function, decrease inflammation, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, proteins for every meal, vegetables with every meal, save the fruits for snack time, they have things like nuts and hummus, and this is an amazing regimen that will keep you healthy. And if you're one of those uh, calorie counters and you belong to one of those places that do the point systems, I never agree with those places, I'm, they're gonna remain nameless for this, but they'll tell you that you could go out and eat a hostess cupcake and count that towards your daily points. So they're basically instilling you that you eat garbage, but guess what? You'll just retract it from your caloric intake. It doesn't even make any sense. So this concludes the first part of our workshop, okay, where we talk about how 